cracking cheese. Cheese comes in so many shapes and colours, it is balmy. Mmm, it's melting. Yes, oh, it's melting. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, children. Welcome. I'm Sam, and today we're at a Wensleydale Creamery in the Yorkshire Dales to learn all about how cheese is made. Now, the Yorkshire Dales is in the north part of England. It's very green and very hilly, which makes it perfect for farming and perfect for cows. This is Sandra. Hello, everyone. Sandra works here at the Creamery. She's going to be telling us all about cheese. And we're actually in the museum part at the moment, aren't we, at the Creamery? Yes, we're here in the museum. We have a visitor centre here at the Creamery where visitors can come, learn all about the cheese, and then actually watch it being made, and then finally taste it. Fantastic. And outside of this Creamery, it's beautiful green rolling hills what an amazing part of the world you live in oh it's beautiful it's uh, as you say we're in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales National Park there's rolling hills dry stone walls barns in the fields there's um, 40 farmers in the Yorkshire Dales that are supplying us with milk and um, there's small farms with cows and sheep and they supply us with milk on a daily basis. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So is this place full of farmers and full of, 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 of cheese makers? Uh, we're the um, only creamer here in Wensleydale making Yorkshire Wensleydale cheese. So we uh, collect milk from 40 local farms and we craft the cheese here. Our skilled cheese makers craft the cheese every day and they make Yorkshire Wensleydale cheese. Fantastic. Very special mm. cheese we're talking about. Then. What are we going to see here today during our visit? Right, today we're going to see the whole process from the cows in those fields who eat the grass, make the milk, which we collect, and then we bring it here to the creamery where the skilled cheese makers handcraft the cheese. It's then packaged and sent out to the supermarkets where you can all buy the cheese. Exciting, so the whole process, yes. Yes, that's great. Let's meet our schools that we have joining us today. Let's go over to our first school, Robinswood Primary School in Gloucester, where Mrs. Harding's class are there. Hello, Hello. children. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for taking part. We're going to have lots of fun today. Right, let's go over to Hurst Park School in West Mosley, where Mr. Berryford and his class are there. Hello! <laughs> Lovely big shouts yeah. there. We're all very keen to take part. Let's go to Fuller School now, right up there in the Shetland Isles. Hello! Hello. Thank you so much for taking part again. And let's go over to Holy Trinity Rose Hill School in Stockton on Tees, where Mr. Waller and his class are taking part. Hello, Hello. children. Ah. Lovely. All those faces all very keen to learn about yeah. how cheese is made. A great um, way to start is to find out what you actually do know about cheese already. Hands up, children, if you know what the main ingredients of cheese is. I think it's milk. They think milk. it's milk, milk, Sandra, is mm -hmm. that right? That's right. Well done. If you put your hands up as well and if you thought milk, then it was this lovely bottle of milk. Now, this bottle of milk is made from cows, but there are other animals that make milk, aren't there, Sandra? Yes, yes. We, you can milk sheep, goats and buffalo. Fantastic. Mm. So do you make those kind of um, cheeses here as well? We do make some sheep's milk cheese. Fantastic. Yes. That's one of my favourites, actually. Um, we've got a video just showing you the whole process, or the first process, of how grass is made into milk in just a second. First of all, let's find out about the, the creamery. How long have you been making uh, cheese here for, Right. Sandra? Well, Wensleydale cheese has been made in Wensleydale for nearly a thousand years. Our creamery here has been um, making cheese for 60 years, so that's quite a long, a long time, and a lot of those skills of the cheesemakers have been passed down over generations so there's a lot of history and heritage there and we're really proud of the cheese that we make today. What is so special about the Wensleydale cheese? Well we've got the Wensleydale milk that we go that goes into making the cheese, we've got the skill of the cheese maker and our own special starter cultures that we add at the start of the cheese making process make it a very special cheese and of course it's made right here in Wensleydale so it's Yorkshire Wensleydale cheese um, that is the real thing that is made in Wensleydale. So it's only so it is made in other places but the real the real deal is made here in Wensleydale. That's right, yes. Wensleydale can be made elsewhere, but only Yorkshire Wensleydale is made here at the Wensleydale Creamery. Great. Well, there would be no cheese without milk and there'd be no milk without cows. So let's watch, watch this video now that shows how lovely, amazing, brilliant cows turn grass into milk. How is grass turned into milk? Isn't it amazing that the milk that makes Wensleydale cheese starts out as grass in the fields of the Yorkshire Dales? James is a local farmer here in Wensleydale. His cows are called Frisian cows. 
Frisians have black and white markings and they are really good at producing milk. They're also very friendly to work with. To us, the cows might all look the same, but James can recognise each of them from their individual markings. Each of the cows can produce about 25 litres of milk every day. That's enough milk from one cow for you to have a hundred bowls of cereal for your breakfast. But to make cheese you need a lot of milk. It would take ten glasses of milk to make just one standard size packet of cheese. In order to make such large amounts of milk, the cows need to be fit and eat healthily. They have a favourite food. Can you guess what it is? Yes, fresh green grass, and they need to eat a lot of it every day. In fact, they eat the same as a fifth of their body weight. That's the same as you eating ten loaves of bread in one day. And for cows to turn the grass they eat into milk, they first have to digest it. We humans can't digest grass because we only have one stomach. But cows have four. And as the grass moves through these four stomachs, the cow is able to absorb its nutrients to help make the milk. The cow stores the milk in its udders until it is time for milking. James and the other farmers milk their cows twice a day, once in the early morning and then again later in the afternoon. Every morning the fresh milk is collected by a lorry. The lorry takes it to the creamery where they start the process of turning the milk into cheese. So we are now where all the cheese is made. This is absolutely amazing here, yes, Sandra. Yes. It's great, a hive of activity behind us. Huge vats. It smells very creamy, doesn't it? It is, it's a very, very milky smell in here. Quite sweet and milky and it's really warm as well. Fantastic, we're gonna find out all about this process in just a second, but we've just watched that video, so I think it's time to find out if you've been watching carefully. So let's go over to the children at Hurst Park School. I've got a few questions for your class, Mr. Berriford. What breed of cat? is best for making milk? Frisian. Oh, Frisian cows. Frisian cows, yes, yeah, we have Frisian cows here in Wensleydale. Fantastic. Okay, my next question, how many stomachs does a cow have? Four. Somebody just shouted four. Four, that's right. Is that it's right? Four. Imagine having four stomachs, children. You could eat a lot of cheese, yes, couldn't yeah. you, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my final question, how many times a day do the cows get milked? Twice a day. Twice a day? Twice a day, that's right. We milk them in the morning and in the evening. Fantastic. Children, you have been watching and learning and listening very, very carefully. Thank you so much. Time to listen a little bit more now and learn about this amazing cheese making process. Sandra, show us what's happening here. This right, is okay. Fantastic. So we're, we're here in the creamery this morning. These vats were filled with fresh milk. It was pasteurised. We're halfway through the cheese making process here and you can see that the curds have been separated from the whey so we can see they're being stirred and we wow. can see some of the small curd particles. Little bits. Yeah, Ooh. so you can see they're quite small, they've been cut up and you can see that the whey is the liquid in the, in the vat at the moment. You can also touch the side of the vat and that is really warm so that's a steam jacket that is scalding the curd, that's part of the cheese making process. Yeah, it's nice so, and warm, it's like a warm bath isn't that's it? Right, yes, Very yeah. nice. So we're currently stirring the curds and whey and that's all part of the cheese making process. Once we stop stirring, we let all the curd particles settle to the bottom of the vat and that's what we'll see in the next one here. Fantastic. I think some of the children might think curds and whey, little Miss Muffet yes, sat on her tuffy right. eating so, curds and whey. <laughs> so we've drained all the way away and you can see the final traces of the whey just draining out through there and that's going for pig feed. Pigs love whey. Oh wow, really so nothing's sweet. wasted Yeah, that's at all. right, yes. So, And you can see that the, all those small curd particles have all now knitted together and they're in the vat and it's quite springy. Wow. It's like a sponge. It is like yeah, a sponge. So can I have a little feel? That's right. Ooh. So they're all tiny particles and they it doesn't really have much of a smell to it. No, it's quite it? quite mild at the moment, but as the cheese making process goes on, the cheese once it's packaged up, it starts to develop the flavour. Right, mm. okay. So if I tasted this now, it wouldn't taste. Uh, it wouldn't have too much of a taste. No, no. no. Okay. So it's quite it's a little bit like scrambled egg if you That's like, right, break yes. it up. It's yeah. quite rubbery. Yeah. So you can see all the small particles and they've all knit together. And then what we'll see in the next vat is where we've then cut them up again. Okay. Okay. Very busy over here. <laughs> 
Wow. And you can see that the cheesemakers are busy at work. It's uh, quite a labour intensive job. They're currently mixing up, up the vat. They're, um, we've put added salt, which is an important part of the process. And they're now um, mixing up the curd and chopping it up. And then what we'll do next is we'll put it through a mill so it then shreds it down again so it becomes scrambled egg again, again and then we'll fill the moulds and press it again so it knits tight together again that's fantastic. right fantastic wow it's so yeah. great in here thank you so much You're sandra welcome. okay it's now time for a video that shows this process in more detail how that lovely milk that comes from those very special wensleydale cows are made into cheese how is milk turned into cheese Humans have been making cheese since the Egyptian times, that's over 5,000 years ago. And the process that a modern cheesemaker follows hasn't changed very much since then. Milk from local farms arrives at the creamery every morning. The milk has to be fresh to make delicious cheese, so they start the process straight away. First, the milk is poured into big metal baths, called vats, and stirred. Next, they have to sour it by adding a starter culture which is like yoghurt and contains friendly bacteria. This starts the process of curdling the milk and splitting it into two parts, the solid curds which become the cheese and the whey, the leftover watery liquid. At this point the curds are chopped up and they add salt. The salt stops the cheese going off and brings out the flavour. Next the curds are squished and squeezed into pots, a bit like making sandcastles. After a couple of days, each block of cheese is taken out of the pot and wrapped up in cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is used to protect the cheese. It's a special fabric which allows the cheese to breathe while it ages. Now it's time to wait for the cheese to mature. This can take from a few weeks to anywhere up to two years. The older the cheese, the harder, drier and stronger the flavour. The cheesemakers have to taste the cheese regularly for flavour and quality to check whether it's ready to be packed up and sent to your local shop. So we're back in the museum now. That was really exciting though in yes, there, Sandra. Yes, Thank yes. you. Really quite so warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the children enjoyed that. So we're probably going to have a few questions for you now, mm -hmm. Sandra. Let's go over to our schools. Um, children, if you have any questions for Sandra about the cheese, now is the time. So let's go to Robinswood Primary School first. Uh, Mrs. Hardin, do you have any children that have questions for Sandra? What's your favourite cheese? What a great question. What is your favourite cheese, Sandra? And a very hard question as mm. well. I'd have to say Yorkshire Wensleydale. Yorkshire yes, Wensleydale, yeah. you would have yes. to say that. But I do like the cranberry one as well. Yeah, the cranberry yeah. one is lovely. Mm. My favourite's the smoked. Yeah. Um, good question. Anyone else with a question? When was cheese made? What first made in there? Yeah. That's a very, very good question. Sandra, do you know this one? When was cheese first made? Oh, cheese was first made, I believe, in the Roman times. It was made a long time ago. And we've been making cheese here for over a, nearly a thousand years <gasps> in Wensleydale. So it's, it's a product that's been made for a long time. Fantastic. Yeah. It is mm. so tasty. Yeah. So <laughs> it's hardly surprising. Yeah. Let's go and get another question from Robinswood. What's the strongest cheese? What is the strongest cheese? Right, there's lots of different cheeses and, they, and when they mature and develop they get stronger. Um, I would say blue cheeses are quite strong and pungent. They're yeah. those ones mm. that I guess if you walk past mm. a cheese shop has that pungy yes. smell. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I've got another question there at Robinswood. How do you make the different flavours and the cheese? Great question, Tabitha. How do you make the different flavours for the cheese? Ah, that's point? a really good question. Um, making cheese is like making a cake, really. You've got the same ingredients, but you do different things along the way. So to make a crumbly cheese, we might add a little bit more, a little less starter culture at the start of the process. Um, we looked in the cheese room at the vats. They had um, jackets around them that were steam injected. And so we have them at different temperatures. Um, so we might add different ingredients and do different different things along the way um, and then for example when we make the Wensleydale and cranberries we make the Wensleydale cheese we then gently crumble it back down add the cranberries and repress it so it's really like making a cake same ingredients but we do different things along the way 
Fantastic. Great questions there, Robinswood. Let's go over to Hurst Park School now uh, with Mr. Beresford and his children. Hello, everybody. Hello. How does the cheese get stronger when it's left longer? Oh, that's a really, really good question. Why does the cheese get stronger when it's left longer? Cheese ages and we add starter culture at the start of the cheese making process and as the cheese matures that start that continues to work in the cheese so um, it might be for example if we make the blue cheese um, it, we add a blue mould spore into the vats and as that um, matures it develops it gets stronger it's also to do with the environment in which the cheese is stored as well so if it's in a maturing room it might take on different flavours because it's in an atmospherically controlled room so there's different things as well in terms of the ingredients and also how it's stored that can affect the the flavour and how it develops great question and great answer as well Sandra um, do we have another question from Hurst Park how long have you worked there good question how long have you worked here for Sandra oh I've worked here for 15 years wow mm -hmm. that's a long yeah. time yes yeah <laughs> so but you know so a lot about a lot about cheese now yes obviously. Um, and it's a job I really enjoy is it, is it something that's in your family? It is, yes. My parents um, are farmers, so they produce milk, so I understand all about the, che the milk being produced and then all about the cheese-making process here. So it's a, it's a really interesting job that I do. Fantastic. Would you recommend it to the children? I would, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fantastic questions, Hurst Park. Let's go over to Fuller School now in the Shetlands. What gives cheese its colour? <gasps> Very good question. What gives cheese its colour, Sandra? Ah, that's a very good question. That um, is something called a natto. So we add a natto to a cheese. So if you see, for example, a red Leicester cheese or a coloured cheddar, it's um, a, a, a liquid that we add to the, che to the milk at the start of the cheese making process and it's called a natto. Oh, very good. I didn't know that. I've learned that today. Um, fantastic. Great question. Let's go over to Holy Trinity now. The Holy Trinity Rose Hill. Which cheese takes the longest to make? Great question. Which cheese takes the longest to make, Sandra? Um, I would say one of our mature varieties um, that is, it's really quite softer in texture and it takes a lot longer to make. So a normal Wensleydale will take around four hours. The Kit Calvert Wensleydale that we make that is, isn't as crumbly, that could take, that takes longer. Great, fantastic. Um, somebody else in Holy Trinity, Rose Hill, for us? How many different types of cheese are there in the world? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, Sandra, do you know how many different types of cheese there are in the world? In the world? That's <laughs> a very good question. Um, I know that in the UK, I believe that we've got over 500 varieties. Um, here on the table here, we've got about 20 different varieties. So just here from one creamery. So in the world, I could imagine there's quite a lot. Yeah, mm. quite a lot. I think mm. and there's probably new ones coming out all the of time course, as yes, well. Yes, that's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. OK, so you were talking and you did mention about the cheeses we have here. We've got an amazing mm. array of cheese. I think it's about time, children, don't you, that we tasted some of this cheese. And I know most of you have cheese in your classroom, so if you do have some cheese, pass it around. Um, have a little smell before you do pop it in your mouth and taste it. And just um, notice the different textures and different tastes in all the varieties. And if you could talk us through this, yes, Sandra, it'd okay. be great what we have here. So here, if we start with the Yorkshire Wensleydale cheese, mm -hmm. you can see it's quite mild. And if we cut it, it's quite crumbly. Yeah. There we go. It's got a crumbly okay. texture. So that's Can I different. Try yeah, you have a okay, taste. So, thank you. so the texture of a Wensleydale cheese mm. is different to a cheddar. So mm. cheddar might be more rubbery and softer. This is quite a crumbly cheese, but it's still got a, a, a creamy, crumbly flavour. Oh, it's lovely. It's so good. And then we spoke about the cranberries before. This is Yorkshire Wensleydale with cranberries. So you can see it's a very fruity cheese. We gently break down the, the Wensleydale, we add the cranberries and then repress it. So it's a, a, fr a fruity cheese, but it's got, it's got lots of colour and flavour. Lovely, look, like I can see our children are really, really enjoying their, mm. uh, their cheese. I'm getting to try it all here, mm. it's lovely. Yeah. Mm. Now this cheese here, the third one, is a smoked cheese. This is smoked Yorkshire mm. Wensleydale. So you can see that the outside of the, the rind is, um, is a golden beech colour and that that's show that shows that it has been naturally smoked. So the actual rind might have a stronger smoke flavour than, than um, the centre of the cheese. But if you can see, it's still quite crumbly. Fantastic, lovely. There we go. Children, I hope you're enjoying the cheese as much as I am. <laughs> this go. is my favourite, the smoked cheese. It's really, really tasty. It's so good. 
Finally, we've got a blue cheese, so you can see all the blue veins in there. So we add a blue mould spore at the beginning of the cheese making process. The cheese then goes to a maturing room and is pierced, so that allows air into the cheese and that develops um, the, the blue veining that you see. And it's really, really creamy is this one. So you can see how the knife goes through. This there, is the one that's it's a little bit more, I don't say smelly, but stronger, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this maybe has yeah. it. It's, uh, there we go. So mm. you can see it's got a lovely colour. It's really, really creamy. Mm. Beautiful. So good. Yeah, so it's so many different colours, flavours, yeah, textures. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. And it's important to remember as well, obviously, cheese is very good for you because it's the milk um, in cheese that provides the calcium, which is very good for, like, mm. strong bones and strong teeth. And the protein as well, good for mm. growth and repair. But you can't just eat as much cheese as you want, can yeah, you? Yes, so, I mean, you're right. It does contain a lot of calcium, which is really important. Um, but it does contain um, salt and fat. So it's important that we eat it as part of a healthy, balanced diet. So everything mm. in moderation. Yes, that's right. Shall we find out if our schools enjoyed their cheese? I know I enjoyed my cheese. Let's go over to Robinswood Primary School. Hello, children. Did you enjoy your cheese? Yeah! Yeah, yeah. 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 but most of our balls don't taste that much. It was epic. They enjoyed their cheese oh, there good. at Robinswood. Let's go to Hurst Park School now and um, see what you thought of the cheese, children. Yeah. 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 Did we have one particular type of cheese which was your favourite? It has to be a tie between Wensleydale and Cheddar. Oh, okay. They did like the Wensleydale and they like the Cheddar as well, they said. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go over to Holy Trinity Rose Hill School. Wensleydale! <laughs> oh, a unanimous <laughs> Wensleydale! <laughs> Fantastic. Look, Sandra's got a huge smile yes. on her face. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandra, You're for welcome. talking us through all these amazing cheeses. And I think more importantly, taking us into the cream room because that was a great yeah. experience. Thank you yeah. so much. We hope you've enjoyed it, children, as well, learning all about how cheese is made and just starts off life as grass in a field. And thanks to these wonderful cows and the creamery, um, it's, it's, it's made into this amazing cheese. Um, there's loads of activities online as well, which you can continue to learn about cheese. Um, and if you'd like to take part in another online field trip all the information is on the website and if you'd like to visit a participating farm or a um, store you can do that as well and you could be having lots of fun like the children you can see on the screen right now it really is a chance to kind of get your hands in there kind of like what we did yeah. in the creamery and yeah. um, but from Wensleydale yeah. it's goodbye bye <laughs> bye everybody bye children bye. Bye Robinswood. Bye. Bye Fuller. Bye Hespar. Bye. And bye Holy Trinity. Bye. 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 <laughs> mm, it smells.